Welcome back to SciShow Space News. It's been a couple of weeks since New Horizons historic flyby of Pluto, and each new batch of data we get seems to come with lots of surprises. If you joined us on the edge of our collective seats when the pictures started coming in, you'll recall that one of the very first images we got showed that Pluto has mountains and a relatively smooth surface, signs of an active outer layer that scientists were really not expecting. And according to some new data, Pluto's hiding even more strange features like flowing nitrogen ice and an atmosphere that it's disappearing a lot faster than it was just a couple of years ago. First, check out this latest picture of Pluto's surface. You can see swirls where ice has been moving around and it seems to have filled at least one crater. Scientists say the ice is probably made of nitrogen because at Pluto's temperatures, other types of ice on the surface wouldn't be able to flow. Water, for instance, would be way too brittle. But in addition to just being cool to imagine, these glaciers of flowing frozen nitrogen are more examples of recent geologic activity on Pluto, probably within the last few few tens of millions of years. Then there's this image snapped by the probe as it sped away from Pluto. That hazy halo you see around the dwarf planet is part of its atmosphere, and it's doing some very strange things. The haze stretches more than 160 kilometers from the surface, five times further than models had predicted. And it contains methane, ethene, and ethyne, compounds that are part of the process that gives Pluto its red hue. Radiation from the sunlight converts methane to ethene and ethyne, which fall to the surface. Eventually, those particles freeze, and more radiation turns them into tarry, brownish compounds called tholins, and those tholins are probably what's coating the surface. Also in the latest batch of data, mission scientists measured Pluto's atmospheric pressure using antennas from an array called the Deep Space Network here on Earth to send radio waves through Pluto's atmosphere so that they'd hit the New Horizons detectors on the other side. And they found that apparently half of Pluto's atmosphere has disappeared in just the last two years. Based on how the radio waves were bent by Pluto's atmosphere, scientists think the atmospheric pressure there is only about one past Pascal at its surface, as opposed to the two Pascals that they measured in 2013 when Pluto passed in front of a background star. By comparison, the standard pressure at sea level on Earth is over 101,000 Pascals. The team thinks that Pluto's atmosphere might be collapsing because it's moving away from the Sun, which is causing some of its nitrogen to condense onto the surface. But Pluto passed its closest point to the Sun back in 1989, so if the atmosphere was going to collapse, astronomers thought it would have happened much sooner. But be patient, with so much information still coming from New Horizons, researchers just need more time to figure out what's going on on our little friend out there with the heart on its butt. And Pluto isn't the only far-off place that we've learned about recently. Mission scientists with the Kepler Space Telescope have released the latest set of possible exoplanets to be detected by the scope, adding 521 new worlds to its existing catalog of more than 4,000. And 12 of them seem kind of similar to Earth, including Kepler 452b, the new record holder for most Earth-like planet ever discovered around a Sun-like star, and the sixth most Earth like planet orbiting any star. NASA's calling this world Earth's bigger, older cousin, and it does seem a lot like the place humans call home, I mean, insofar as we know anything about it. For a planet to be considered Earth-like, it has to be within its star's habitable zone, where it's close enough that it's probably not a frozen wasteland, but far enough away that life wouldn't boil to death. Earth-like planets also usually have a diameter that's between one and two times Earth's, making them more likely to be rocky instead of just balls of gas. And Kepler-452b fits all of those requirements. It orbits a sun-like star star at a distance of just 5% farther away than Earth orbits our Sun, with a 385-day year. Temperatures would be tolerable, and models predict that it could have active volcanoes, a dense atmosphere, and liquid water. Sounds a lot like home, but there are some differences too. For one thing, the planet's diameter is 60% larger than Earth's, and while it could be rocky, it might also be gaseous. And even if its surface is solid, its mass, about five times Earth's, means that you'd feel double the gravitational pull. Plus, its star is 10% bigger, 20% brighter, and with an estimated age of 6 billion years, 33% older than the Sun. Meaning that over the next half billion years or so, the aging star's increased energy output might make any water on the planet evaporate and eventually escape entirely into space. So even if we wanted to colonize a world 1400 light years away, Kepler-452b might not be the best place to make a long-term real estate investment. But there's still plenty of new Kepler data waiting to be crunched, so this is a record that might soon be broken. For now at least, Kepler-452b is the closest thing Earth has to a twin. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Space News, which was brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. If you want to help make this show possible, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow, where you can also get some pretty cool stuff. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishowspace and subscribe.